Hate crimes are rising in the nation and in this city. As they marked the one year anniversary of the death of Michelle Goh, pushed to her death in front of an oncoming subway, we're going to examine the causes and possible solutions to this troubling societal problem. The point starts right now. Queens Assemblyman Ron Kim and Brooklyn Councilman Calvin Yeager are my first guests today as we look at the rise of hate crimes. Gentlemen, what I'd like to do is get personal from the very beginning, asking each of you if you or someone close to you has experienced hate crimes or discrimination, and can you tell me about it, Assemblyman? Yeah, I mean, even during COVID, um, I've seen my constituents uh, in my own neighborhood uh, get direct, get hit, get sped on, get pushed. Um, and so it's happening you know, almost every single day in my neighborhood um, from people who are unhoused, people who have mental illness. Um, and it's something that, um, that we knew that existed, but we're seeing a lot more of these days. Councilman. Yeah, I'm walking around with a yarmulke in New York City is, uh, is not an easy feat these days. And I've seen it uh, from my neighbors and constituents and children in my neighborhood. Uh, but I've seen it myself on the subway, um, you know, derogatory, nasty comments, uh, you know, hey, Jew, or something even worse. So I guess the question is this, does, is, does it affect decisions in your daily life? Whether you take the subway, walk to the grocery store, walk down the block to see a friend, or go out at night? It, it affects uh, people all from uh, all across the spectrum from our community, from students who are taking the subway from Flushing to Manhattan at nighttime to older adults afraid to go shopping at the grocery store. You know, they're asking for help. They're asking for support because and, and the fear is, is real and, and, and people are feeling it and people are making everyday decisions around public safety. Councilman, does it affect your personal decisions and what you do and how you go and where you go about it? Oh, absolutely. Even just on the subway, my routine has very much changed uh, from... In what way? From the days of sitting on the subway and scrolling through your phone to keeping your phone on your belt and keeping your eyes open. And do you, does it affect decisions in your daily life, like I'm not going to go outside at night, I'm not going to go down the block to go to the grocery store? No, I, not really so much in the neighborhood in which I live, but I know that there are a lot of people uh, throughout our community and also not, not living in the, in the homogenous orthodox areas where it, does some, it is something that they keep in mind. I just wonder if the experiences of, of hate crime has affected either, either of your decisions to decide to get involved in public life. Well, for me... You know, it's not just the physical harm uh, that stems from hate crimes, but it's the economic um, hardships that's also a, a threat to my constituents. So people are scared economically as well as physically, and that's part of the reason why I joined public service, because I wanted to uplift our communities out of economic hardship, which is intimately connected uh, to, the, to the root of violence and crime in our communities. Counseling. For me, uh, I've talked about this before, the Crown Heights program changed the direction of my life and propelled me to want to go into public service. What about that program, the Crown Heights thing, drove you to decide to get into public service? Well, I, I was a teenager when it happened, and we lived in, uh, we still live in Midwood, uh, and I lived in my, my parents' home, and uh, I remember seeing on TV, um, and really my parents, my father uh, and I, we were talking about how this was so close to us, yet so far away, um, and watching it, you know, unfold on TV, a day, two days, three days of Jews being attacked on the streets of New York City. And of course, in the first night where a Jew was murdered uh, for simply being a Jew. And it's something that this happened, I think, when I was 15 or 16. And it really changed the way uh, I thought about what I would do with my life. So, gentlemen, why do you think there's been an increase in hate crimes over the last several years? I mean, what are there factors that have contributed to this? I mean, I think the hatred and the tensions between Asians and Jews and other communities have always existed, in especially urban settings like in New York City. But when we have uh, health, economic, and financial meltdowns, um, all that stuff comes to the surface. People are feeling triggered. People are coming out and targeting their anger and angst and frustration at, at others. And unfortunately, every time we have these uh, meltdowns, Asian Americans and Jewish Americans seem to be the prime targets of, of the hatred. Councilman? I, I, think, I think there's been an otherization of our communities, my community, Ron's community, in real ways. 
um, uh, uh, you know, I can point to examples, for example. But the, why are you the target? Well, uh, why, why, why is it just, not just Asians, but if you take a look at the numbers in terms of New York City, Jews are the number one target for hate crimes, followed by uh, gay New Yorkers and Asian New Yorkers. And then after that, um, African American New Yorkers. Well, depending on depending on the period of time that you look, uh, the Asian community, the Orthodox Jewish community, and the Jewish community as a whole uh, are are vying for number one and number two, and it's not a contest we're trying to win either of us. But why? I mean, why are people well, taking it out on you? I think that some of the language that's been used about our communities, particularly in the last three, four, five years, for example, and a real live example, in, with the Asian community, there's been a conversation going on for the last five years about the specialized uh, tests and the in the high schools. And that conversation, maybe not uh, uh, intended by the people who were leading it, but really became a conversation about those Asian kids are taking your seats in the public schools. And I think that if you look at where the hate crimes uh, against the Asian community started moving up, it was really over the last five, six years. During the pandemic, the Asian community was, uh, and Ron could probably speak uh, far, far smarter about this than I, but the Asian community was blamed uh, in unfair, unhealthy, uh, vile ways um, about the pandemic's existence and about its spread in New York City. And in fact, if you look at, I mean, I, I have events in the Chinatowns of Brooklyn, uh, uh, 8th Avenue and Bensonhurst. The Asian community is actually the most masked of any community as an ethnic uh, uh, segment of New York more than anybody else, but yet they have been blamed more than anybody else. Uh, Assemblyman, do you agree with that? Yeah, I mean, Marcia, I mean, the, I mean, no. the specialized high schools. Do you think that contributed to the feelings in New York City, or I, was it also the pandemic? I think it's the process of how we discussed specialized high schools under the previous mayor that led to uh, many Asians and other communities having a conflict, having a misunderstanding of each other. That it wasn't an inclusive process. No one wants to be part of this rat race of of a very competitive, hyper-competitive program, but Asian Americans are preparing for this test, and we weren't invited to the table to have meaningful conversations about how to move the city forward. And when you do that, the, the system itself is dehumanizing uh, growing the fastest growing minority community and telling other communities, this Asian Americans are not part of our ecosystem, and they're perpetuating certain stereotypes, like treating us like foreigners in our own city and in our country when we're trying to contribute and have uh, a positive impact. So, Councilman, when I went out to speak to New Yorkers about why they think there's been this increase, a lot of them said leadership. And I don't know whether they were talking about the leadership in Washington, the leadership in New York City, but do you think that that's a legitimate concern? I do. I think that there are politicians in New York City, in New York State, um, and, and in Washington who have used uh, derogatory language and thoughts uh, to talk about our communities in real ways. In New York, I've seen it. There are people who hold public office, high public office in New York today, uh, who have treated my community in particular uh, uh, with, with derision, uh, with difference, um, setting us apart and otherizing us. Selman Kim, leadership, is that an issue in terms of why we see so many hate crimes? Yeah, I mean, when, when the highest politician in the world it comes out and vilifies Asian Americans and call it the Chinese flu or China flu. Uh, those words matter and, and it has an impact on how people perceive all Asian Americans. Um, so we need to do better with, with language, we need to do better with leadership and making sure that we are part of the process and making policy decisions that impact our communities. So you're saying that the pandemic played a role? I think the pandemic it lifted the, the band-aid that was put on uh, that existed for many years. Um, there were tensions between communities. And even when I was a kid with, with the LA riots and, and in Brooklyn when we had the, gro the Korean grocers getting attacked. And we spent years having inter-community development to work together to fix these and put in the hard work. But it takes one president, one language, one thing to trigger uh, the tensions that have existed and, and, and we have to do a lot more now to rebuild those bridges. Councilman, pandemic, was that a role, that play a role? Pandemic played a role. Uh, um, a lot of things play a role in it, but it's it's more than that. I think it's uh, uh, there are segments of uh, politics in New York City that are very different from the rest of the politics in the country. And I think that in New York City, you know, I tell, I tell people all the time, I don't see MAGA hat wearing people in New York City committing hate crimes. That's not where the hate crimes are coming from. All right, we'll be right back just with more just coming up.